Hey guys, it's Danny. Alrighty, this is day two of remodeling, redoing my greenhouse. Basically cleaning up the greenhouse and rearranging some stuff. And today we're gonna start with arranging a new filming space, which I decided I will make it over here. Now the problem with this space, that's already cluttered, but I'll tidy up when I'm done. So the problem is there's not a lot of space there, even though I'm very close to the sink. But I do have my stuff that I want to have in reach, so I kind of need a new filming space. And this one just became empty. This is where I was keeping my mini greenhouse, but I dismantled it and now it's an empty space. So I can definitely make it a filming space. For this though, I need a table. And it just so happens that I do have a spare table. Ta-da! So this right here is the cheapest table IKEA sells. It costs 20 euros. Now don't get me wrong, it's not the best of qualities, it gets scratched pretty easy and if you put water on it and it drips, it will swell. It's not very, very well made. But when I purchased this table, I intended to use it outside. I was thinking that I'm gonna do a lot of repottings outside. Turns out it's way too hot to do that. So this table has been sitting around outside. I didn't use it all that much. I didn't want to clutter my greenhouse, but now I have a perfect use for it. So as you can see, it's already scratched here. I don't know if you can see, but yeah, it's already scratched. The good thing is, it's quite sturdy, it has adjustable legs, and for the purpose that I intend to use it with, it's absolutely perfect. So now this table will serve as the place where I film. I can store the things that I use when filming here. So this thing will sit right here. It's not gonna clutter my greenhouse anymore. The tripod can stand in that little space right there, folded or even under the bench, so it doesn't stay in the greenhouse like until now. And what's better is that under this table, I have some storage space and I intend to put here my containers of medium which I showed you in a previous video. So this is my new filming space. It's also good because my spotlights up there are pointing to that direction. So I do have light shining right on this table. And if it just so happens that I don't have enough light to film, I have a little lamp that I can put up there. I can connect it to that plug and it will shine light right on top of my table. So that should give me more light to film, but I think I have enough. So this is working out great. Okay, so this issue has been fixed. Now I wanna go to the Vanda corner because I have some changes to do and also I wanna show you something really cool. Okay, so I found a little something that makes my life a lot easier with Vandas. And actually this was my boyfriend's idea, but it's genius. So what this is, is a little device that helps you pick up clothes if you have them in a high closet. Also it's used when you wanna take down the beam with the clothes, you know some closets have that option. Anyway, I found it at a home improvement store. I think it's a pretty common object, but what I use it for is picking up my Vandas because as you know, they're kinda high up. And since I installed these benches, I cannot really lean all that much because I'm short. So this thing helps me a lot. Allow me to demonstrate. Okay, so we have a Vanda Orchid right there. She's kind of far away. And by the way, this thing is extendable. Let's see. All you need to do is rotate it. And there you go. Ooh, it's quite long. I don't need it to be that long. So let's see, I think this is enough. And what I need to do, and I'm standing right next to the camera and there are about, maybe about a meter and a half between me and this Vanda. So what I need to do, Ta-da! And I just picked up my Vanda. And to put it back, of course, it's just that easy. And there we go. And so this tool is super useful if you have hanging plants, maybe they're higher up and you extend and stretch your back and all of that. And you manage to bump over the orchids underneath and you break flower spikes and pseudobulbs and leaves. We've all gone through that. This thing will save your life or your orchids. It's super cheap. It was, uh, I don't know, two euros or something like that. If you have issues with hanging plants, do get yourself one of these things. It's so, so useful. Trust me, it's the little thing that makes the difference in your orchid maintenance program. So alrighty, now about the Vandas. Currently, they are hanging by some really ugly floral wire and I don't particularly enjoy it. So I purchased myself something new for them to sit hanging and look pretty at the same time. Alrighty, so I do wanna keep the principle of hanging the Vandas on my beam, my curtains beam, but I really don't like that tie. And I got myself a pair of utensils that are small enough to fit my hands. And, oh, this is kinda heavy. <laughs> 
and a chain. It's a golden chain. Now, a little side note here. I used to hate gold, like with a passion. It was just a preference. I didn't like wearing it. I didn't like to have this particular color in my house and near me. I don't know, I simply hated it. As the years went by, <laughs> I'm starting to kind of like it. I still don't like wearing it and I don't think I'll ever wear gold or the color gold in any way. Eh, I never should say never, but anyway, I'm starting to like it. This color kind of fits my greenhouse pretty well. It goes really well with green actually. So I want to make the extensions from the beam, from my curtain beam to the actual orchid hook from this little chain. This will make it easier to move on the beam because currently I just improvise something out of some floral wire. It gets caught in my curtains, you'll see. It's really not ideal and I don't like the looks of it. So I'm gonna do something with this little chain and theoretically it should look pretty good. Found this at a home improvement store once again. Costed me one euro and a little per meter. Not that expensive, so with, I don't know, six or seven euros, I purchased all this chain right here. So let's get to work. So first of all, I need to remove this little shelf right here to be able to reach that. Now here's the thing, on this side I have the bottom or actually the low part of my IKEA stand. You see it makes this bend, so I can actually put here a taller Vanda because it has space to go down. This side will be made for the big Vanda, the tallest one that I have. Okay, so I won't be able to talk while I'm up there, but I'm gonna show you here the procedure in which you can detach a piece of this chain from the big chain. All you need to do is split apart this little cut right here that the chain has. You cannot really do it with fingers unless you're really strong. You do need some pliers, that's why I purchased these. So let me show you what I mean. You grab the two sides with pliers and then you spread the chain apart. Now this was some tough chain, I needed to go off camera, but there you go, this is what you want. Kinda messed it up, but. Jesus, this is hard. So all you need to do now is just remove it from the main strain. I really hope I can put this back now. So I'm gonna go to the beam. I'm not gonna be able to talk, but you'll see what I'll do. Okay, so let's see if what we did here is viable. My concern is that little loop and how easy it is to put a Vanda on this loop. Ah, oh, it works and it's actually pretty easy. I think I just need to arrange this hook on the Vanda better. Oh no, I think it's okay. And there we go, this is my Vanda and as you can see, she is quite on top of my IKEA stand. It's pretty neat. Theoretically, if I want to move my Vanda around the beam, I can totally do so with the use of this thing. And it works! There you go. <laughs> if I want, I can move my Vandas around on this beam. And you know what? I'm pretty impressed with myself because I'm not good at crafting whatsoever. But yeah, it worked, so I'm gonna go ahead and do the very same things for the other Vandas. Let me just show you. See the difference between those wires, ugly wires, and this little chain here? So pretty. I love it. Alrighty, I'll see you when I'm done. Okay, I've refined my chain game, so what you want to do is put your pliers with one of its claws above the opposite link to where you want to split the chain, and with the other plier you want to do the very same thing, but under the opposite link. And now all you want to do is split, and voila, the power of leverage. And we're done. It actually didn't take all that long and all of my Vandas now look very pretty hanging by these chains. Now, I have some empty spaces, but I intend to purchase more Vandas and I think I can put three more Vandas on this wall. So I'm really, really happy. I still have chain left. Everything is okay. Now, in the future, I want to mount a bar on this window right here as well. So this is the south and the other one is the west. So I can put some more hanging plants there as well, probably Vandas. Now that things are going very well with the Synthic and these plastic pots, I can afford to buy as many Vandas as I can because it takes literally 10 minutes to just dunk them in the bucket and then let them drain. I'm so, so happy about this. Finally, good use for Synthic. Alrighty, so this is about it for the major things that I wanted to do in the greenhouse. In the future, as I was telling you yesterday, I want to make some benches under my shelves here. It really doesn't look all that pretty with the orchid sitting down, and any little bench makes such a difference. 
I really, really like how this turned out. Here I want to put the Dendrobium Phalaenopsis orchids because those really do require quite a lot of light. Maybe some highlight on Cidiums, I don't know. The Nelly Eilers will go there next to the Miltoniopsis, that's their designated corner. And this will be a space for kind of high moderate to high light plants. Oh, another thing that I did and I didn't show you, I removed the big curtains. If you remember, I had that sheer curtain and then some big curtains. I thought I would use them in the summer, but it turns out I didn't. It's not summer now, so I'm definitely not using them. So I took them down and probably I will use them somewhere else. I can find a good place for them. Also, it gives more light to this shelf right here. So overall, I'm pretty happy with the result. Now, another thing that's on my mind, but I don't know how to fix it, is a place for the Hoyas. Now, I have my three Hoyas just swirling around the IKEA stand and everything is okay, but I have a few more. So here I have the Hoya Bella, really pretty. Here's a little update on it. The three Hoyas that I got from Habib, I didn't get to repot them yet, but I should repot them because I'm observing my other Hoyas are doing and growing much better than these ones. So I think it's good to repot them. Um, I also have the Hoya Australis, as you can see, growing. She's really, really pretty. Now, these Hoyas, some will be pendant, some will try to climb. If they don't have anything to climb on, they will be pendant. So I was kind of thinking of a sort of display which can hold a few Hoya pots, even a pendant type of setup display. And I wanted to put it somewhere there. Maybe I can move this bench more in front. I'm gonna actually move the Amethystoglossum higher up there because he does require quite a lot of light. So in that corner, I might want to do something with the Hoyas, but I'm not entirely sure just yet. I don't have an image in my mind. So here is where you come in. Do you have any ideas of a nice display? Do let me know in the comments down below. If you have links or anything to pictures of particular displays, let me know down below. I was also thinking to hang my Hoyas in a way from the beam when I install it, but I'm not entirely sure what I wanna do. I kinda need some inspiration. So I would really appreciate if you have some good ideas and some good examples to show me, cause really they do deserve a better place than this. They're just sitting around my orchids right now. They're not properly displayed. I wanna. I want to display them better. So, alrighty, these have been the two-part series of working in the greenhouse with me. For now, I'm kind of done. So thank you so much for joining me. Hope you had a little fun in the greenhouse. If you've enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you didn't, give it a thumbs down. Subscribe to my channel for daily orchids and plants videos. And don't forget to turn on notifications so you never miss a video. And with that said, thank you again for watching. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye! So my Jumbo Puff is in beautiful, glorious bloom, and the flowers are quite big, very similar to the Cygnotus Wine Delight flower-wise, but the blooms themselves are quite bigger. Downside is it has no fragrance. It's been three or four days already, and I don't feel anything. Is this normal? Because everywhere I read it's supposed to be fragrant. What do you think? Is it because it's the first blooming for this orchid, or did I do something wrong? Or maybe it's still adjusting? I don't know. I really, really hope I don't have a faulty one that's not fragrant. Because I hear it smells beautiful.